If you are interested in isopods, you might already know that they can come in many different colours and patterns, ranging from pure white, orange and even the patterning of dairy cows. If these colours and patterns can be isolated and eventually passed down to the majority of their offspring, they can be classed as a true morph. But sometimes an isopod will show up with a random colour or pattern that cannot genetically be passed down to their offspring. These are not considered a morph, but simply a colour variation. To understand how morphs work, we have to learn a little bit about genetics. Every organism has two alleles for each gene, one inherited from their mother and one inherited from their father. These alleles have a dominant and recessive relationship. This means that one allele, which is the dominant one, expresses over the other allele, which is the recessive one. This relationship is usually written using the alphabet. Dominant genes are usually written as a capital letter, whereas recessive genes are usually written as a lowercase letter. Now let's do an example. Our goal by the end of this video is to create a colony full of orange Pisalia levis. To do this, let's breed a common grey Pisalia levis with an orange Pisalia levis. The grey colour is dominant and the orange is recessive. Now the first thing you want to do is to select a letter to express these allows. The letter you choose is not important, so long as the dominant allow is a capital and the recessive allow is a lowercase. Let's choose the letter I for this example. Common grey is two capital I's and orange is two lowercase I's. When we breed these two individuals together, there are three different pairings that can happen with these allows. There could be two dominant allows, big I, big I, which will make the carapace grey. Individuals with two dominant alleles are called homozygous dominant. There could be two recessive alleles, little i, little i, which will make the carapace orange. Individuals with two recessive alleles are called homozygous recessive. And there could also be one of each, one big i and one little i. In cases like this, the individuals will be grey, because the dominant allele will always express over the recessive. Individuals with one dominant and one recessive allele are called heterozygous. But how do you find out the probability of what colour the offspring will be when you breed these two isopods together? Let me introduce you to Punnett squares. Punnett squares are a tool that we can use to measure the probability or likelihood of a genetic outcome based on a specific genetic cross. To begin a Punnett square, we need to create a table that looks like this. One of the parental genotypes will be on the top and the other will go on the side. And then you simply carry the letters through into their respective boxes and match them up like so. With the Punnett square completed, we can see that 100% of the offspring will contain one dominant and one recessive allele, making them heterozygous individuals with grey coloration. So now we have plenty of isopods that are common grey but are carrying the orange gene. Now remember, our goal is to make a colony full of orange Bacillia levis, so we still have some work to do. So what will be the result if we breed two of these heterozygous isopods? Let's find out. The Punnett square is complete and we can see that 25% of the offspring will have two dominant alleles, making them homozygous dominant with grey coloration. 50% of the offspring will have one dominant and one recessive allele, making them heterozygous with grey coloration, and the remaining 25% of the offspring will have two recessive alleles, making them homozygous recessive with our desired orange carapace. Now let's take two of these homozygous recessive isopods and breed them together. The Punnett square is complete and we can see that 100% of the offspring will now be homozygous recessive and will have our desired orange carapace. If we continue to breed these homozygous recessive isopods, we will have a large colony of orange Pacella levis in no time. And that marks the end of this video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video, which will be about how to care for the smooth slater beetle, the Pacella levis.